Hello and welcome to iBoomerang Training 103. Today's training will cover our web conference tool and contact management tool. Here's a preview of what we'll be talking about today. First I'm going to go over the ins and outs of the web conference tool, the GP5, and from there we'll talk about the contact management tool. The first section of today's training will go over the web conferencing tool, GP5. This part is designed to give you an overview of your web conference tool and help you get this downloaded and be ready to start practicing. To download GP5, go to your iBoomerang back office at my.iboomerang.com. Scroll down to your tool set and select web conference tool. Choose the correct download for your computer. If you're using Microsoft Windows, click on Web Conference Tool for Windows. If you're using a Mac, choose the Web Conference Tool for Mac button. Follow your computer's instructions to install the program. Then enter in your login information. If you're new to the Web Conference Tool or you forgot your login, you can go back to the Web Conference Tool in your back office and click on the Account Validation tab. If you downloaded the program correctly, you should see a shortcut on your desktop and in your status bar. Double click the icon on the desktop to open the program. This is what you will see after you log into the GP5. You can uncheck the show at start box if you don't want the startup screen to show every time you start the program. The first thing you need to do is select the room you want to join. Your room should already have moved over for you. Here is a closer breakdown of the rooms list. If you want to create a new room, you click on the plus sign in the top right corner. You can see the example, this user has one room for orientation presentation and another for sales projections. Each listing shows the name of the room and the access code. To the right of each listing is a button you can click to join or leave the meeting being held in the room. When a meeting is taking place, there will be two number icons displayed. The first one in the red shows the number of participants and the second one in the black shows the number of moderators. At the bottom is a section for the most recent room that you have visited. To choose the room, simply click on the room listing. This will open up the user interface. I'm going to go section by section and explain where everything is located. If you want to bring up your rooms list again, click on the rooms button. Use the Room Info tab to configure the audio and video settings. And just a special note, don't ever, ever, ever delete your room. This will cause you to lose your access code and we cannot get that back. Audio settings is where you can enable or disable settings for audio, the moderator, and guests. The display in the bottom left corner shows the meeting duration and your access code. If you would like to invite people through the web conference tool only, you can do so by clicking the Invite Others tab. On the Invite Others tab, you can choose to send an invitation by email to yourself and send an email to others. The Guide by Phone button gives you a script to use if you're telling someone how to get to your conference over the phone. The Copy to Clipboard and Instant Message buttons will copy a web address or short message that you can send to a person digitally. Beside the Invite Others tab is a Recordings tab. If you choose to, you can record your presentations and then this is where you can find them. Moving back out to the main interface, the box in the center at the top displays the room name, access code, and the presenter's name once the screen sharing has started. The indicator light turns green when you are in a meeting. You can join or leave a room by clicking on these buttons. On the right side are your toolbars and information boxes. To toggle to the small toolbar, click this button. This removes everything except the toolbar. This is also the default when you are actually presenting. On the screen are notes showing what each button does. The ones you'll most use most often are the share screen button, which you will click to start or pause your presentation, the expand button, which will take you out of mini mode and back to the full version of the GP5, the button with the guy and chat bubble, which will show you which will show or hide your participant list, chat, and hand raise floating windows, and the annotations tool. The annotations tool can be used by presenters in combination with screen sharing to draw on the screen or used locally in a room with an audience. The descriptions are on the screen, but this is a great way to highlight, draw, and type while you're giving a presentation. We recommend testing these out and really learning what they do before you try to use them during a real presentation. Again, when you're done using the mini toolbar, click this button to go back to the large interface. The next area is the participant list, which displays the participants in the meeting. Those in bold indicate the presenter, and those in italics are moderators. 
When you right click on a person's name, you get many options. You can mute or unmute the person, grant them control of your desktop, make them the presenter, allowing them to show his or her screen, and disconnect them from the meeting. There are also options to sort the participation list by name, role, and arrival. The chat area displays your chats. Public chats are seen by everyone in the room. Choose private chat to chat with only one person privately. Enter your message in the box at the bottom. Now that you know about the new interface, let's talk about hosting a presentation. To get started, make sure you join the meeting from either the rooms list or by clicking on the join button. When you're ready to start your presentation, click share screen. This will change the GP5 to the mini toolbar and by default your screen will be selected for the presentation. The best feature of the new web conference tool is that you will have the ability to select a region on your computer. When you select on when you click on share screen, the share screen settings toolbar will pop up indicating you to select the area of your screen that you want to share. You can change the size by adjusting the corners and edges. The area that will be hidden to the viewer will be grayed out areas. When you've made your selection, click the start sharing button. Your screen should change to something like this. The green line indicates what is being shared with your viewers. You'll notice you now have a tab at the top of your screen. This tab displays the duration of the meeting, your access code, and a button to adjust the share screen settings if you want to select a different area of your screen to share. If you want to double check what your viewers are seeing, expand the mini toolbar, then go to the help menu and choose what am I sending. This will open a small viewer that shows you exactly what your clients are seeing from your screen. To pause or stop sharing, you can click the share screen button on the mini toolbar or the share screen settings button and then stop sharing. When you're completely done with your meeting, click on the leave button. You will be asked if you want to leave and end the meeting, just leave the room, or to cancel leaving. To disconnect everyone, be sure to select the leave and end meeting option. You will also need to call into the teleconference number if you are doing a group presentation. The standard telephone number is 712-432-1551 and the number for premium teleconferences is 617-231-0350. Please note the teleconference number is provided for free and is intended for group conferences. If you are doing a one-on-one -on -one conference, just call your guest from the phone of your choice. When it's your time for your presentation, make sure that your guests know what time the conference will be held and make sure they have the right telephone number and personal access code. Your access code can be found in multiple places in the GP5 that I've already mentioned, but the easiest place to find it is in the top box of the main interface. There are several ways to get your clients to attend your web conference. You can point them to your branded website where we put a direct link to your web conference at the top of the page. You could purchase a shortcut URL like joindug.com, which is easier for your client to remember. Shortcut URLs are covered more in depth in the 104 training. You could also send an invitation by email or text, or you could even provide a card with a QR code that sends the user directly to your web conference. This is what your clients will see when they go to your link. All they need to do is enter their names and email addresses to click and click join. The teleconference information is also displayed for them. When they click to join, this is what they'll see. It's important to note that in order to see your presentation, your clients must have Java installed on their computer. It's a free, quick, and easy download, but make sure you discuss this with your client before trying to start your conference. If you're having trouble with the web conference tool or are away from your computer, you can host a meeting through the iBoomerang back office. Simply go to the web conference tool and then click on away from the office. You can also get a complete history of your web conferences by clicking on the web conference history tab. Now let's talk about some web conferencing best practices. The default setting for PowerPoint is to display the slideshow full screen. This will not work if you want to use the region sharing feature of your GP5. To get started, open your presentation in PowerPoint and go to the slideshow tab, then click the setup slideshow button. In the show type section, choose browsed by an individual. You can also choose if you want the scroll bar to be displayed during the presentation. And when you're done, click OK. 
When you click to start your slideshow, it should display in a window like this. You can adjust the size of the window by dragging the corners. And again, this is what your screen will look like when you're giving your presentation. First, before you start your presentation, make sure your client has Java installed. You cannot grant control to your client unless they connect using Java. Second, be prepared. Have your websites, applications, and anything else that's essential already loaded and displayed on your desktop. Also, jump on the call 10 to 15 minutes before you plan to start to welcome your clients as they join. Close any programs that you aren't using otherwise. It looks messy and can slow down your computer. If you are having problems with connection speed, try pausing and resuming the presentation. Expect a two second delay when presenting to your guests. Every internet connection is different, so keep scrolling to a minimum and make sure not to jump from page to page quickly. Talk to your client just like you are in their living room. This will make them feel comfortable and you will get to know them better. Have some basic questions ready. Be sure to smile as you're presenting. Remember, a smile can be heard across the phone line. The best way to be prepared is to practice. This really helps you know the web conference tool and your presentation. Ask family, friends, and others to watch and listen to your presentation. Now let's go over the contact management tool. The contact management tool is an online database for you to store your client's information. To log into your contact management tool, simply go to your iBoomerang back office and under the My Toolset area, click on the contact management tool. You will then be prompted to log in. Your user ID and password are going to be what you use to log into the iBoomerang back office. After logging in, you will be sent to the home page of your contact management tool. The navigation is at the top in the blue bar. Below the navigation are your most recently viewed contacts, and the main section holds several dashlets or widgets. To customize your home page, click on the Add Dashlets bu button. Once you click on the Add Dashlet link, a pop-up will appear on your screen. Here you can choose to add dashlets that are preset for the contact management tool, such as different charts that help you keep track of how many sales you are making by lead source. You can even ha add a dashlet for any website such as your iBoomerang back office. To do so, click on the web tab and type in the address that you want to use. Then click the add button. Once you click on add, your new dashlet will appear on the home page of your contact management tool. From here, you will be able to log in and access your tools. Another URL you might want to add is your agency calendar. Once you click on Add, your calendar will appear on the home page and you can add appointments and disposition them as well as look to see what you have scheduled for the day, week, etc. You could also add your webmail as a widget. Once added, you can log into your webmail and send emails right from your contact management tool. Now let's talk about the other features of the contact management tool. The Contacts or Clients tab is where you can see all of your contacts information. Here you will see a list of your contacts and quick links to their information, so if you want to send an email to a contact that is on the list, you simply click on their email address. You have a couple of different options to choose from to enter a contact into your database. You can choose to create a contact manually by typing in all of the person's information, import contacts from a CSV list that you have already saved, or impact, import contacts from a V card. To create a contact manually in your contact management tool, click on Create Contact in the Actions bar. This is where you need to enter in as much information on your clients as possible. You have multiple fields that can be filled in with the client's information as well as their family information and insurance information. Once you have all the information entered in, click on Save at the top of the page. To enter contacts through vCards that you have exported from Microsoft Outlook, click on Create from vCard. To create vCards, you'll open Microsoft Outlook and go to your contacts, then go to File, Import and Export. From there, select Export to a File and then choose Comma Separated Values, Windows. Follow the rest of the steps and save the file to your computer. Once you have this completed, go back to your contact management tool and import the file. The final way is to import contacts from an Excel spreadsheet. Make sure your Excel document is saved as a .csv file and then click on the Import Contacts tab. Browse your computer for the file and then click Next. You'll then need to confirm the field mappings. Make sure that the left column, Database Field, matches the right column, Header Row. 
If these columns do not match up, your information is not going to import properly. Once you have the fields mapped, click on Import Now at the bottom of the page. You will then be shown one of your contacts so that you can make sure all of your information came over correctly. If it did, then you can click on Import Complete and these contacts will now appear in your Clients tab. Also from the Contact tab, you can search for a certain contact using the search box. Once you click on Search, if the contact is in the database, you will see it listed below. To see all of your contacts in one spot, click on the View Contacts tab. The next tab is the Opportunities tab. The Opportunities and Production area of the Contact Management tool is designed for people to keep track of what stage their appointments are in. The Opportunities section helps you move your appointments through the pipeline and meet your sales expectations. To get started, click the Create Opportunity button. Type in the client's information and choose the stage that it's in. If it is your first contact with them, you can select New Stage, and this will tell you that you need to work this client to get the sale. Once you have entered in all of the information, click the Save button at the bottom of the page. Now let's talk about the Leads area. The Leads area of the Contact Management tool is the most important. Every sales professional generates his or her business with leads. Without leads, you do not have a business. This is a screenshot of what the Leads page looks like. Anytime you put in a lead, it will be listed here. You can click on that lead and it will take you to their information. Just like with the Contacts tab, you can enter in leads in a variety of ways. If you choose to manually enter in the lead, you will simply click on Create Lead. It is important that you enter as much information on that lead as possible and then click Save either at the top of the page or the bottom. You can have leads imported from a .csv file. To import your leads, you will simply click on Import Leads. You need to make sure that the comma delimited file is selected. Under Import Action, you want to choose Create Records. Once you have done this, click on Next. This will bring you to the field mapping area. Confirm the field maps and import your list. And finally, I want to remind you that the contact management tool works automatically with the autoresponder that you learned about in the 102 training. After you sync your contact management tool with the autoresponder, the internet leads captured by the autoresponder will automatically send to your contact management tool. So to review, here's what you should know. How to install and log into the GP5, each button on the new interface and how to use the mini toolbar and annotation tool, how to start a meeting, select a portion of your screen using Region Select, and how to end the meeting. How to set up your slideshow to take advantage of Region Select, how to import contacts into the contact management tool, and how to view leads in the contact management tool. And finally, I want to make sure you know that we have a great support staff here at iBoomerang and there are several ways for you to contact us. You can call, live chat, or submit a support ticket. We're also available in the weekly training sessions. We also keep a database of our training videos on our YouTube channel. You can always visit the channel to rewatch any of our weekly training videos as well as more in-depth training videos. And that concludes iBoomerang 103 training. If you're a USABG agent, be sure to enter this code into your trainings tab in your control panel to get credit for the session. The code is good for just one hour following the presentation. If you have any questions or ever need assistance, please don't hesitate to give us a call, and you can always rewatch a session if you'd like.